they were Bible study places. I told you that First Corinthians is the most comprehensive statement resurrection of Christ and the resurrection of Christ's followers. Today we come to look, borrowing somewhat the title of my favorite pure John Owen. John Owen wrote a book. It was 20 years in the making, The Death of Death, Death of Christ. Death of Death, Resurrection of Jesus. Not this. But our text is killer. Killed. Christ dies. Rises from proving conquered. Turn in First Corinthians fifty to stand with me. Good. I follow along. I actually in preparing this was matters we Isaiah five came. I was studying this. Heavenly. First Corinthians 15, verses 50 to 58. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. The perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall be then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death swallowed up. O death, where is death? Where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, the power of sin. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast. Immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord labor. We just read together what errant, fallible. And I pray the Lord will strengthen you wherever you are in the strengthen you in reality. We've sung, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He has conquered death by his death. Strengthen you to know that if you are in Christ, a follower of Jesus Christ today, end what this passage talks about. And if you're not yet in Christ, in light of what's going on around us, if God is speaking out of the whirlwinds, we find ourselves cowered down in shelters. to Christ. Thank you, Beast. Well, we, we studied up until this point a few weeks ago, looking at the end, other section in 15, coming up to verse 49, mind you, that talking about the perishable versus the imperishable. He's already started this line of thinking the first man Adam Adam the last man second Adam about him being earth giving us contrast comes really verse 50 to make sort of a summary statement shift or drive nail home remember 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians is written 
to debunk the notion that there is no resurrection for mortals. That Jesus Christ may have risen from the grave, wonderful idea, but when we die, we go spiritually to be with Jesus followers, but the body has nothing to do with it. These people were raised in a pagan climate that taught that the body was evil. So to be rid of your body was a relief. So someone teaching that the body would be united, glorified in a different heaven, they didn't, they didn't take that in. So they, were, they were rejecting the notion of a bodily resurrection. Looked at you. Our, go to the previous slide, the four that handled today we're going to look at three headings resurrection is essential for life to come if there's no resurrection then the idea of a heaven in our future meaningless Second, the resurrection is the eradication of death. Death dealt a resurrection. And the resurrection encourages. It's a provocation. We understand that there's something beyond this life. That we're going to live a much better way it provokes you. Okay, so let's look at this passage together today. First of all, the resurrection is essential for the life to come. Look at verses 50 to 53. I tell you, this flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the perishable. I'm talking about the contrast. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Someone suggested one time that that ought to be a scripture verse blazoned over the nursery. Not all sleep. Changed. Different. But in this context, not all will die. All in Christ. You're going to say radical. In a moment, happen. Be any. any electricity happening. A moment. Blinking of an eye. Just what it, the time it takes you to. Last trumpet. The trumpet will sound. The dead will be raised. Buried. Perishable. This perishable body that we have now must put on imperishable. Because you're going to a place that never ends. Going to a place where time is no more. Going to a place where Jesus will preach, will never wonder, has he gone too long? Time. Mortal body. Put on immortality. So you have this summary statement which bridges previous verses, verses 51 and 50. As we are right now, folks. We cannot inherit the kingdom. Jesus taught that in the Sermon on the Mount. Except your righteousness is greater than the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall not see the kingdom of God. That was a shocking thing. People like his disciples, the crowd that gathered to hear the Sermon on the Mount here, because in their minds, the disciples will actually ask, then who can be saved? We will, we'll get to see heaven. If we're not living righteously, along the way, in, his, in the course of his ministry, Jesus would expose the Pharisees, the frauds that they were. It's all about the appearance of external righteousness, whitewash. And even the, the external was sitting. can't get to heaven like we are now. 
even if we've trusted Jesus. If heaven opened up, staircase came down, climbing Jacob's ladder, couldn't get there. It's a statement made negatively. There's a positive implication to it, that, that there's got to be a change. That's why we talk about salvation in three instances. Justification, I have been saved from the penalty of sin. Sanctification, I am being saved from the power. In glorification, I shall be saved from the very presence. That means that where I'm living, experiencing the, the applications and applications and tripwires of sin all around me, and then battling sin in my own life, that that's got, all that's got to go, and it will go, and it will not be with me. Physical body's got to undergo. Changes from the inside out, initial metamorphosis, transformed, Paul said in Romans 12, 1 and 2, by the renewed mind being out, but it's got to finally be total transformation. That comes because of the reason. Paul is saying, what I mean is this. The term flesh and blood is a description of the present earthly body. It may carry with it this idea of frailty. Now, some of you are not old enough in here to deal with frailty. Some of us are. Interesting. Pop up. Bounced. Protected. Vulnerable. Paul's talking about this frailty. One writer said it, it Paul's way of just talking about the living. Flesh and blood. Living men cannot inherit God's kingdom. The idea of, of inherit is is not, not to own, to inhabit kingdom. writer said that the idea of flesh and blood may not take in only those who are alive at the perishable mortal Could take it to see that he's using a, being a good Hebrew, he's using in Greek parallelism, perishable, mortal. Could be making it hard to know. Definitely talking about everyone, every person who's ever, every person who's alive. I want to get your attention here to me. Behold, pay attention. Mystery. I'll show you a mystery. Talk about this word mystery before. It's one of those words that's not even translated. If you looked at it in the Greek, if you could read Greek letters, the musterion. And it just comes to us straight from the Greek. Musterion becomes mystery. English. It speaks of a divine truth, undiscoverable, apart from divine revelation. Brothers and sisters, had you and I not received a divine revelation, we would never have found Jesus. Other love. Been to you again. Christian and hopeful's discussion. Pilgrim's progress. Christian asks him, basically, share your testimony. Tell me how you came. Powerful picture of. I'll show you this mystery. First, not all Christians will sleep. In other words, not all Christians will die. There may well be some sitting in here right now who will be alive, the Lord Jesus. Because it seems to me, I, I'm not one of these guys that chases eschatology, 
looks at what somebody said and paper says and then goes to the scripture to try to find I'm, I'm having to work too hard growing in grace to get ready for those but it could well be so I'm listening to my voice today I have not all still there will be followers of Jesus Christ why that's the first thing he wants to show them it's important for church, Corinth, doesn't believe bodies have anything to do with the future life. See, he's exposed. if you're alive when Jesus Christ returns, you have to kill you to work out the, the way that you understand. Not all of you. First Thessalonians 15 is a companion to this to the church at Thessalonica, for this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, we who are alive, who are left, coming, that's the parousia of the Lord, not precede those. Second thing I want you to see is that all Christians will be changed. Not all will sleep, but all will be changed. Some will have already died. The whole generation here. Every generation died. And while we're worshiping relative comfort today, our Nigerian brothers and sisters in Christ are dying by the hundreds of martyrs. Brothers in Cuba, pastors in Cuba. Picture house, ransacked, pastor and his hauled away. Happening. Christians talks about the third thing you and it'll occur in a, in a flash twinkling of an eye word used here is interesting the word moment related to some Bible the word atamos Adam Adam Greek that which cannot be cut it will happen so quickly that you cannot slice the time it takes. You cannot break it up in twinkling, casting of a last trumpet. Not so much succession of trumpets. The force of the word is final trumpet. No other trumpet sound. Last, look at Matthew 20. He will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call. They will gather his elect from one end consummation. That time when a revelation when God blows out history like a candle and he rolls it up that last change bodies of her in connection with the sequence we need to talk about here is resurrection of the dead in his fifth moment thinking of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable those who those whom we planted in the ground some of you have done that this done that for two of our members evidence perishable that be brought forth imperishable never Mind you, I read through a trilogy, you bend it to you, prose trilogy by Calvin Miller called The Singer, The Song, and The Finale. The singer is a prosaic story about Jesus. He comes and he brings a song. The song is the, is the 
prosaic work of facts. It's the gospel taken forth. The finale is the resurrection. Revelation, end of time. In the finale, there's this where, where the singer is preparing to come. He mounted his white horse, has the myriads with him. his army is going to turn, trample his enemies, set liberty, people. Coming, there's a two things going on. Martyr, fell about to be martyred. He's in prison. Faith of Jesus Christ. Just as we're told that singer is on the way. Comes, rips the roof off the prison. Lights. The man looks at him and says, Will I ever have to die? Perishable. Never to taste death again. Never to taste anything associated with death. We have aches and pains. We have illnesses. We have cancer. We have diseases. Death. We have, have poverty. Go down the list that, that attach themselves to a face world. Dead will be raised imperishable. In 1 Thessalonians 4 16 and 17. In that companion, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. We who are alive, who are left, who are caught up together with the clouds to meet the Lord in the earth. So will we. Perishable. Clothed, perishable, mortal, not, must be clothed. Writer, perishable, dying body. The word must, pulsatile, absolute, no. No. See, when we come to Jesus Christ, God no longer looks at us in our filthy rags of our own attempts at righteousness. He looks at us clothed in the righteousness of Christ. That's justification. Sanctification is our coming more and more like Jesus Christ. As we grow in grace, as we hate sin, love God, and we love His truth, love His grace, love those things that are wonderful and noble and beautiful, growing in grace, looking more and more like Jesus Christ, thinking more and more like Jesus Christ, speaking more and more, acting more. Then comes glorification, where robes of righteousness. See, now death seems to triumph. So you know better. Grieve. Death seems to triumph. Isaiah 25, 8. Lord God, approach of his people, he reproach. Where's your God? People are doing this a lot on Facebook. Where was God when this? Did it in Peter's day? Where's this promise?
people in this hiding, persecution. They're going to be faced. They hate life. Death will be take away the reproach. Why? This, this prophecy of Isaiah, the evangelical prophecy, all the way back to Genesis. Verses that you eat Adam's offspring. Victory. I want to final. We'll get to realize what Paul says in Romans eight. In all these things we are more than conquerors. We will experience the life of the conqueror. Thirteen. Ransom the power sheet. Death where? Takes this. Came across in one of my studies, John Don. Rose of death, be not proud, though so some have called thee mighty and thou art not so. For those whom thou thinkest thou dost overthrow, die not, or yet canst thou kill. Why swellest thou then one short sleep past? Death shall be death. The idea of the sting, the apostle talks about, is, is that of a venomous, inflicting, fatal wound. The picture is in my mind, been in my mind for you. That when Christ hung on the cross, Satan, the old serpent, reached up and grabbed him by his foot, finished him. Satan thought, finish off. Bedded, poison, his wickedness, something he did not enter. Rained. Power. Rained him. All to the impotent. Effect. Thing is left. Sin. Sons and daughters of Adam and Eve live in sin because they want to live in sin. The gospel is offered to them. Free grace of God. God brings the gospel as an enabling tool. Repent of sin, trust in Christ. To have done death. Jesus says, his most haunting words, he says, you would not come to me that you might have life. That will be said to everyone who's lived this life, who's heard the gospel, who has chosen not to accept it, not to respond to it, not to receive it. These will be the words. If you heard the gospel while you lived, anyone you know is this. You would not come to me that you might have life. Why do you think Jesus exposes you to the gospel? Do you think he gets some sort of sick joy setting you up for a more hellish hell? He exposes you to the gospel with the intention that you would come to him, that you repent of your sin, trust in him. The scripture says, why will you die? Why will you die? God who takes The death 
Pages of purpose to live life apart from Him. If you're young or old, it doesn't Storing up for a payday. RG Lee. Payday. Thanks be to God. He gives us very much like Romans seven twenty five, where Paul's talking about his sin. In the in the seventh chapter of Romans, he's dealing with remaining sin. O oh, wretched man, I who will deliver me from the body of death? He says, The things that I know I should not do, I find myself doing. I hate it. The things I know that I should do. I find myself not doing, and I hate it. Self, cover that there. There are things that you're saying, acting, not hate it. Don't sit back. Casually, calmly, and say, Oh, well, you know, Paul didn't do it. I hate it. Ask this question Deliver me from this stinking corpse sin that is tied to me, is rotting on me. That's, that's, you want to break down the language? Who shall deliver me from? Paraphrase Ow. Spiritual knowledge. Answer. How do you escape that, Paul? How do you how do you get that? I mean, if you struggle here today with remaining sin, listen to me. This is the answer. But thanks be to God, Christ our Lord. That's the answer. Jesus has delivered you. So then he said. I myself serve the law of God with my mind. Aaron, it's a serve. So it's this the same way in verse exclamation thanks be to God gives us the victory of our Lord Christ victory over what victory over what else all of death's sin death exists for one reason Stir up in you sinful sinfulness, utter sinfulness. Sure, leave this, breathe your judgment. Remember that every time you hear someone, Augustine, mother, prayed for him. You hear the bells toll. The devil wants companions. He Death. Victory over sin. We have the victory over sin. We can fight sin. Fight Standpoint, follower of Jesus Christ, equipped with the full armor of God.
taking us to encourage us that therefore, now in the light of this, therefore, Professor who's across therefore in the ask us therefore. Telling us about therefore, in light of this, my beloved brethren, steadfast. Immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That's to be our life. Fast. Dependable. Body. Counted on as a Christian? Consistent. Dependable. Immovable. Sure. Not tossed about by every every fad that blows along the way. Standing. Your feet shod. For the preparation of the gospel of peace, those, those hobnail boots of the Roman soldier, they dug in. Always abounding, not tolerating, not shuffling, not just managing. Oh, how you doing? Well, I'm doing pretty good under the circumstances. That's, no, he's not talking about that. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Preacher, I don't sound like a Leave me more. But abounding in the work of the Lord. First of all, a heart work. Then it's a mind work, the renewing of your mind. Then it's a then it's an attitude, action work, the word, blessing, encouragement. It's an edifying, always abounding, abounding, abounding in that. I don't, I don't think anybody notices. I mean, you know, I try to abound, nobody. Motivation. Your labor. Brothers and sisters, you and I have never wasted one minute for service. That's too big a. You have never wasted one second. Reading the script. You've never wasted gathered in one. And the devil may convince you at the end of a time like this, or you could have spent your time a whole lot better than this. That raving loop. That's the devil, though, he's a liar. Never. Your labor is never in vain. There are things we do that are so I can start naming. Let's fill in the blank. Vanity. Vanity. Not necessarily bad. A lot of stuff we should. I'm not. Don't, oh, the preacher wants everybody to be a preacher, just not get paid. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about abounding in Finding your joy in that. Finding your delight in that. Missing, not being with the people of God. Bounding, because you've never logged one wasted second service. When we cross over, Jesus comes for us, either by taking our breath away, perishable, comes, he splits the heavens and comes right in the middle. Ever? You realize he's all his fairest of teeth. He is worthy of every particle of You have that kind of hope? That's what the resurrection of Jesus Christ gives. It gives. You have that kind of set of lenses. Is that how you see life? Christ's death. Time. Transform you from inside out. Get you ready to be totally transformed outside. Good of your own. 
There's some interesting times. Josh told me they've lived five years. Ever. Three nights. Local shelter. I would just. Shelter there. Pump life. Shelter. Three times this week. Daughter, son in law who live in the city area, coming directly at them last night. Pray. Tornado is four. Three miles away. Devastating. Folks, because you and I, we all know people have flooded out, people have torn damage, people injured, harm, we're going to have a hard time digging in. Hide from this. You. Farmer out. And if we back when the trains were running and they were time to time the wheels on the burn across. Walking out in this field aftermath. Hard. Walking along, and he came upon a prairie hen. Plain. Almost in frustration with the big thing. Not from under it can. It had been stupid. Saw what was gathered her hand. Sat down on them. Took the fire. That's what ready. He's risen. We'll rise. Glory, Christ. Unmoved. Always a breath in you. I do too. Your Holy Father, we bow before you. Amen. Thank you. Sir. Thank you for this passage. It reminds us that because Lives all who try. Great encouragement. Be reminded as we as we grow older and experience the reality, frailty, perishability of mortality. That's not all there is. There's a day coming. All that we. Change and transform. Perish. Body. Live. Wells. Light in. Mortals. All of us who know Christ, 
today in this place live for him, founding the work of the Lord. Yet no him drift him blood water. Founding Christ.